Yes, anyone um, can tell me what is the meaning of a term wave or what is the definition of a mechanical wave? Uh, turbulence is somewhat different, but turbulence is about flow of a fluid in such a way that it is, uh, you know, it is the opposite of steady flow or streamlined motion that is called turbulence. Okay, a wave motion does not exactly involve flow of a fluid. It does not actually involve uh, medium particles moving in the direction in which energy is propagating. Rather, it involves oscillation of medium particles. Okay. So if we talk about the broadest definition of waves, okay, you'll understand that it is a process by which energy or information is transferred by oscillations of medium particles. So that is why waves, we can say in a, con in, in a context, wave is a continuation of the study of oscillations or in particular SHM, because while oscillation or SHM was a single particle doing to and fro motion with respect to a mean position with fixed energy and all that, a wave motion or a wave phenomena is an entire collection of particles of a, an entire medium. Like that medium could be the surface of water uh, in the case of ocean waves. Uh, it could be like the particles of a string in the case of vibrations of a stretch string. It could be the air molecules in the case of sound waves propagating through air. Okay, anything like that. So these particles of a medium they are in continued oscillation in such a way that they transfer energy from one particle to another as oscillation energy. And that's how energy propagates through what we call a wave phenomena. So broadly speaking, the definition of a wave phenomena, particularly a mechanical wave, is a phenomena whereby mechanical energy, that is a combination of kinetic and some kind of potential energy, is transmitted or transferred or you can say propagated from one point in a medium to another point by oscillations, by creating oscillations of medium particles. Okay, that is the broadest definition you can say of a wave uh, or a mechanical wave. Okay. So a phenomena. Whereby mechanical energy. Propagates. to a mechanical medium by oscillations of the medium particles. So the oscillations are such that the mean position being fixed So that is the important aspect to understand here, that while energy is propagating from one point to another in the medium, the, the mean position of the oscillating particles is not shifting. It is remaining fixed. It's only oscillations about the mean positions, the to and fro motion about the mean positions. But the mean position is remaining fixed while energy is propagating across that medium. So that kind of a phenomena, anything which creates this phenomena or which facilitates this phenomena is called a wave motion. Now, based on how the oscillations are happening, as you might be aware, we broadly classify mechanical waves in two categories. They are either called transverse or longitudinal. Yes, that's what I'm saying. No? The mean position is fixed. Exactly the point, Jagannath. Okay. Mean position being fixed, but energy propagates. Because as one particle is oscillating, it is causing the particle next to it to start oscillating. Then the next one. So it transfers energy from particle to particle, even though the particles are not physically shifting their mean position. You understanding the point now? So for example, on, on the still surface of a water body, like a lake or a pond, if you have a number of floating objects, like floating leaves or pieces of corks, and then at one end, you create some disturbance by throwing a stone or something. So you'll see the ripples, which are basically wave phenomena, 
which travel along the surface they cause mechanical energy to actually get transferred from one end to the other end of the surface but at the same time those floating pieces of corks or whatever that you see you don't don't see them moving tangential to the surface they bob up and down but their mean position remains fixed whereas the energy you can see is clearly moving along the surface you know along with the wave phenomena along with the propagation of the wave phenomena so firstly you are seeing that a continuous shape which is shifting all the time is moving along the surface tangential to it and with it energy is getting transferred but at the same time you observe that the medium particles are not transferring along with the energy they are only oscillating in place so that is the typical phenomena and you realize that this is a very different phenomena compared to anything else that you studied in mechanics for example uh, if if you want to you know directly transfer energy in the form of an impulse the kinetic energy which goes with an impulse and all that from one particle to another or you want to throw one particle from one position to another whereby you transfer energy then physically particles are moving from one point to another okay so that that way the phenomena is very different compared to the uh, wave phenomena where physically the particle is not moving from one end of the medium to another end and they were transferring energy physically the particles mean positions are remaining fixed they are only oscillating but by that continued oscillation one after the other like a linked oscillation that the particles are doing they are able to right charges energy. are charges flow from electron like that Uh, yeah, yeah, but that, that is an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so oh. when when the electric field, so for example, uh, your radio waves or your visible light or X-rays or microwaves, these are all examples of electromagnetic waves. So what happens is that if you have a charged particle, it creates an electric field around it. Now, if you move the char charged particle around, if you cause it to vibrate or something, then the electric field around it will also vibrate. It will it will be varying with time, and as you will be studying very soon. that motion of charge also creates a second kind of field called the magnetic field so when charges are in motion they create time varying electric fields and magnetic fields and further you will study a chapter called induction where you will see that a time varying electric field can create a magnetic field of its own it induces a magnetic field and vice versa a time varying magnetic field induces electric field also so that continuation of fields okay which are influenced by each other with their time variation that comprises what we call an electromagnetic wave and that is the like you can say a third category of wave which is which comes outside the domain of mechanical waves because there are no mechanical medium particles involved and that is why uh, electromagnetic waves are able to propagate through the vacuum of space whereas whereas as you know mechanical waves cannot propagate through the vacuum of space so sound does not propagate in space for example because sound is a mechanical wave which is dependent on the mechanical vibrations of the medium particles to transfer one uh, energy from one point to another if sound is pro propagating through air or a gaseous medium we are talking about the molecules of that gas if sound is propagating under water we are talking about the vibrations of water molecules if sound is propagating through a solid rock wall or you know a solid material so again it is a vibration of the molecules of that solid so sound cannot propagate with if it does not have a medium uh, to make the particles of the medium oscillate and thereby transfer energy but light can because light as you know is an electromagnetic wave and electric field and magnetic field are not dependent on medium to propagate in fact electric and magnetic field get hampered by the medium they get weakened by the medium as you might have studied about dielectric constant already uh, for electric field so like that you will study also for something called permeability for magnetic field so you see that the moment there is a material medium present it actually weakens the field so it also weakens the speed at which electromagnetic waves can propagate hence uh, when light propagates through a transparent medium uh, its speed will always be less than the speed in vacuum or free air like when it propagates through glass for example it's almost two thirds the speed typically or water it's almost three fourths the speed so something like that so anyway we will be talking about uh, electromagnetic waves also at a later stage uh, but that will be when we are doing optics over here we talk about uh, mechanical waves or wave mechanics so we are restricting ourselves to those kind of waves which propagate through a material medium or a mechanical medium okay. and they propagate their energy by virtue of or by means of creating oscillations in the medium particles so on the basis of that we divide our mechanical waves into two categories as you might have heard transverse mechanical waves and longitudinal so in the phenomena of transverse waves what happens is that the medium particles 
oscillate along an axis which is perpendicular to the direction of energy flow or what we call the direction of propagation of the wave and in the case of longitudinal waves the medium particles oscillate in both cases the medium particles have fixed mean positions but it's about how they are oscillating along which axis they are having their amplitude of oscillation so the medium particles in this case longitudinal waves they oscillate along an axis which is along not perpendicular but the along the direction of propagation propagation of the wave that is so an example of transverse waves is waves on the surface of a liquid basically ocean waves those kind of things and another example is waves on a stretched string guitar string yes guitar string is an example of that okay any stringed instrument it creates sound in the air around it actually by first creating waves on a string which is under a certain amount of tension and which has a certain amount of inertia so as the string vibrates it causes vibrations in the air around it and then through some process of amplification whether that is like mechanical amplification or acoustic amplification through a through a you know a resonant body like an acoustic instrument like a guitar or a sitar or even a piano for that matter okay? the the sound is amplified because uh, it causes resonance of air in in a sort of body of air which is captured within some kind of a uh, you know structure which has its own resonant frequencies so that could be the the wooden body of the piano or the wooden body of the guitar or whatever or it could be electronic amplification where again the sound waves that are the tiny sound waves very small amplitude sound waves that are created in the air around the vibrating string they cause tiny magnets or electrical coils to vibrate those are called pickups okay or they are transducers so they convert the mechanical uh, or you can say you know yeah the mechanical energy of oscillation of air particles they convert that into electrical energy or small electrical impulses because those magnets or coils or whichever technology is being used they are vibrating in a magnetic field this created again by electricity and electromagnets so those kind of vibrations create electrical impulses so ultimately your mechanical waves in the your sound waves which are in the mechanical domain are converted into electrical signals which are the equivalent in electrical circuits and those signals are further amplified and you know, then they are fed into the speaker system so those kind of things so we'll talk a little bit more about that when we specifically come to sound it's a very fascinating and also uh, uh, very um, you know you can say very advanced part of technology also um, audio engineering or acoustics and the physics of sound and um, propagation of sound etc and also the engineering behind it when it comes to um, you know sound re reinforcement or audio engineering anyhow so here just getting back to this so examples of waves which are transverse in nature that is the medium particles are oscillating perpendicular to the direction of propagation so these are the best two examples ocean waves or waves on any surface of liquid and the type of waves that flow on a stretched string so the energy propagates along the length of the string whereas the string's particles or the molecules which are part of the string they are vibrating perpendicular to that they are vibrating along an axis which you can take as the y axis if you consider the x axis to be the actual length of the string so energy is propagating along the length of the string which would be your typically your x axis whereas the amplitude or the vibration of the particles is actually happening perpendicular to that which you could take as your y axis so these are examples of uh, longitudinal waves uh, sorry transverse waves whereas longitudinal waves 
are the ones where the particles oscillate their amplitudes are along the same axis as the propagation direction so the the physical example of this is sound waves sir back and forth no uh, sorry come again beta like back and forth no longitude does this yes with the direction yes yes okay so for 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 example if you have any source of sound like you can treat it like a point source like a tuning fork or whatever so what it does is that as the energy propagates radially outwards from that point source it is causing air particles if you you can visualize the air particles like you can visualize concentric shells of air which would be vibrating back and forth like this they'll be vibrating radially outwards and inwards you can see that the individual air particles they are vibrating along the same axis as the axis along which the energy propagation is happening okay or if you create sound waves through an a wind pipe by doing something like this that one end of the wind pipe you have created you have a let's say an electronic speaker or you could have again the prong of a tuning fork so it causes vibrations of air like this back and forth so as those vibrations propagate through the air pipe the energy is propagating in this direction and the vibrations are in the same direction so this is sound waves propagating through what is called a wind pipe or historically these kind of things are also called organ pipes like flute sir yes flute yeah flute is an example of that oh, okay oh, or the oh, church oh. organ instrument or even a harmonium for example if you have ever seen an harmonium so it has these kind of wind pipes inside which are used to create resonances okay sir mouth organ is an example mouth organ yes okay all all these trumpets saxophone all wind instruments they work on the principle of creating resonance in some kind of an air tube or a wind pipe kind of situation okay so those are the two categories of mechanical waves now yeah whistling very good samarth is an example of doing that by creating a shape uh, of your mouth a particular shape you are creating certain resonances that can happen of the air that is trapped in your mouth and then by creating a disturbance in it by making air flow in a particular direction coming from your you know respiratory system forcing air to flow through in a certain direction uh, you are creating resonances at certain frequencies so you hear that sharp kind of sound so you might be wondering what i mean by this term resonances and all that so all in good time as part of this chapter especially the second part of this chapter sound we will understand what resonance means and we'll understand the actual working principle of all these organ pipe kind of situations or even vibrations of a stretch string uh, in terms of resonance and frequency so for example when you play a particular key of a uh, of a piano it it behind within the you know without within the sound box of the piano a particular hammer strikes a particular string and that particular metallic string is under a certain amount of tension and has a certain amount of thickness and gauge and all that so it creates a certain set of resonances so those that set of resonances that it creates dictates what pitch uh, of note it will generate so for example if the tuning of the piano is off that means the tension is not proper or the string has got weakened with time so it's you know its thickness and all is not proper then it will not create the desired frequency so it will sound off because even though by on striking the key uh, it is creating sound in the air around it but it's not creating sound of the particular frequency you want it to because it's not tuned properly so now we will start our study of this chapter i mean we will divide wave mechanics into two sections the first section of wave mechanics will be transverse waves we are coming to that now transverse mechanical waves the most simple model of this we will study is the second example i have given you above that is the vibrations of a stretch string now why that is more simple is because the string is a linear medium so the energy propagates along a straight line 
whereas if you talk about the transverse waves which are ocean waves waves on the surface of a liquid uh, then they are propagating in a two dimensional medium so the equations of such waves become more complex so they become a little bit difficult for us to handle with our level of mathematics so instead what we do is we restrict ourselves to what we call one dimensional waves or waves in which energy is propagating along one axis or along a straight line so the physical example of transverse one dimensional waves we'll study is waves on a straight string Okay, so let's let's come to this part now. Transverse mechanical waves. So as I said, the physical example or the physical model of this that we'll study will be vibrations of a stretched string. So this is our physical model. So, for example, at an experimental level, to create something that is easy to write an equation for, if we have this kind of a setup, we have a very long string. So its boundary on this other side is very far away, going to infinity on this side. So it's a infinitely long stretched. string and later we'll see the two important properties of that string is that it is under a certain amount of tension which will denote as capital t and it has a certain amount of linear mass density that is mass per unit length which in this chapter we will denote with a symbol mu because lambda will be used for somewhere something else over here something called wavelength so even though in uh, chapters like center of mass etc you might be used to taking linear mass density or mass per unit length as lambda in this chapter we'll be using the symbol mu for linear mass density the si unit of that being in kg per meter and tension the si units being in newtons so one end of the string is our origin and the string is treated as our x axis so x is tending to infinity on that side okay now to create a wave on this what we do is just imagine that at x equal to 0 okay, a simple harmonic oscillator given by the equation y is equal to a e sin omega t suppose is attached so that forces the particle at x equal to 0 to oscillate along the y axis between an amplitude of plus a and minus a at a frequency of omega by 2 pi. So what happens is that this simple harmonic oscillator now this acts like the source of a wave. And which type of motion, wave motion? It will act like the source of a one dimensional transverse sinusoidal wave not only at 1d transverse wave but it will be sinusoidal in nature and we'll understand in a moment why it will be sinusoidal in nature because 
the harmonic oscillator itself has a sinusoidal function of time the displacement of the particle is sinusoidal with respect to time so the wave it generates will also have that sinusoidal character okay. so so we are sinusoidal ha sorry sinusoidal what is that you have studied this in simple harmonic motion but anything which is a sine function of time is called sinusoidal sinusoidal okay. is the same thing as harmonic okay okay or harmonic the two words mean the same over here that is it is a sine function of time so the wave it creates that has a sinusoidal character so when we attach this simple harmonic oscillator to the point x equal to 0 or to this end of the string we see that the particle located at x equal to 0 has the oscillation which is given by this equation so because we attach the oscillator to it so that particle which is located at the origin for the string that is forced to oscillate with the oscillator or with the source okay so what happens is that therefore the particle at x equal to 0 or you can say the medium particle that is the point on the string that is the end of the string oscillates by the equation write it as y not okay e sin omega t simple harmonic oscillator has frequency and amplitude capital so these are the two important properties as far as the source or the simple harmonic oscillator is concerned it has a frequency f and an amplitude a okay now so what the oscillator does is it forces this end of the string to oscillate according to this equation which you written here okay now what happens is that that particle located at x equal to 0 starting to oscillate it also propagates energy to the particle next to it so that one also oscillates but what will happen is there's a bit of time required now for the energy to transfer so that will oscillate with a slight phase delay compared to the first one the first one's oscillation has started at t equal to 0 the one at x equal to 0 but the next one at let's say a distance delta x from it right next to it will start with a slight amount of time delay or slight amount of phase delay then the next one after that will start with a further delay and the next one after further delay so like that if we observe that this disturbance starts traveling along the string and it travels with a uniform speed v why uniform because the string has uniform properties of tension and linear mass density mu so then eventually a general particle located at x equal to x that will also start vibrating but with a phase delay because it takes time for the oscillations to prop to propagate and reach from point to point okay so as a result of that we'll see that this particle at x equal to 0 starts to oscillate like this okay so it starts at t equal to 0 starting from t equal to 0 but along with that and oscillation energy transfers from particle to particle along the x axis and the oscillations transfer with is delay so therefore now a particle p at x equal to x will start oscillating after a time delay you can say delta t which will be equal to x by v because the disturbance is traveling 
we are zooming at a uniform speed v because the string is uniform in its physical properties so for the disturbance to travel from x equal to 0 to x equal to x it will take a time of delta t equal to x by v so the oscillations for this particle p they now also start but they start compared to the particle at x equal to 0 they start with a time delay of so much so therefore the oscillation of those particles at the point p will be given by this equation a is sine omega into t minus delta t because they have started delta t seconds later. So if you substitute that here, you can see that it is a sine omega t minus kx. So this is now the equation of oscillation for the particle p which is located at x equal to x. Whereas this one we wrote earlier, this was the equation of oscillation for the particle located at x equal to 0 at the OHM. So you can see they are both SHMs. They're both having the same amplitude and frequency, but they are having a phase difference. And that phase difference actually depends on the distance between them. The more the distance between them, the more the phase delay between them. Okay. So we will see later next up that this represents the general equation of the wave phenomena. Okay. The above equation, why not, just represents the oscillation of one particular particle at x equal to zero. But if we generalize the value of x over here, that x is not a specific point, but x is a variable that is, it is a location, a general location on the x axis. So, what we can see here that this equation will represent y as a function of both x and t. So, that function of x and t is what represents the wave phenomena. It represents how particles are oscillating as a function of the position x as a function of time t. The instantaneous position of a particle at x equal to x at time t equal to t. So, that equation is called the general mm -hmm. equation of the wave. So we're coming to that, but just make a note of the points up to here first. So just write down up to here, then I'll explain how I converted this term T minus delta T into this term, omega T minus Kx. It's only for transfers, right? Yes, this is the equation, like whatever we are discussing now is under this heading, this heading above that we are discussing section one, which is transverse mechanical waves. And under that section, now we are discussing one dimensional transverse waves propagating along a string. Okay. So the physical Sir, example of that, yes. What have we taken the delta is equal to x by v, so what is v? V is the speed with which the energy is propagating along the string. The oscillations of the energy Okay. So we'll write that down also later. Don't worry. Just write down up to this step first, okay, up to here. Then we'll come to the final part, which is the general equation.
Okay, so now here you can note down that V is the propagation speed for the wave along the string. That is the rate at which the oscillations are transferring from particle to particle on the string. That is V. Yeah, so the time delay takes place because of this, no? that there's a propagation speed. No? It does not go infinitely fast from one point to another. It goes at a definite speed V. So if you started the oscillations at the origin at time t equal to zero to the then at the point t it will reach after a certain delay time, no? delta t. Yes. So that, that's why, okay. So now substituting this delta t over here, you can see that this term, omega into t minus delta t can be written as omega into t minus x by v and that can be written as this okay so the quantity k is actually omega by v okay. this is omega t minus that term k is like this So just think of this like a physical instrument uh, experiment that you have this infinitely long string. So infinitely doesn't actually mean that way. It just means it's very, very long. So we are not really initially worried about any reflections of these waves coming back from the other boundary. Now, if we take one end of the string and start making it oscillate up and down with a frequency F and with an amplitude E, then what we will see is that those oscillations, they travel along the string. And assuming they travel at a uniform velocity d, you will see that if the oscillations at the origin are given by this equation, y not equal to a sine omega t, then at any random point which is at a distance x from that end, the oscillation will be given by this second equation which I've written for y at t. So this equation now actually represents the entire wave motion phenomena because it doesn't represent the equation of oscillation of just one particle. It represents the oscillation of any particle which is located at any random position x equal to x. Okay, so we can now say that the general equation of a one dimensional transverse sinusoidal wave. which is traveling along the positive x axis which is given by an equation like this We can just add a phase term because 
So this equation now represents, it represents y is a function of x and t such that y is the transverse displacement of a medium particle okay, which is located at the mean position x equal to x at time t equal to t. So that is why it is a function of both x and t. So in that function of x and t, the x represents the location of the particle. Okay, the location of a particle's mean position. And t is time. So y represents the displacement at x equal to x, t equal to t. The transverse displacement that is. Now here you can see that quantity omega, or let's start with A, A is the amplitude of SHM or oscillation. So it is the maximum magnitude of displacement from the mean position. Okay. Then Omega represents 2 pi f or what we call angular frequency, where very importantly, f is the frequency of the source. of the wave, which is basically a simple harmonic oscillator. Because it's a harmonic or sinusoidal wave, so it has to be a simple harmonic oscillator. So whatever that oscillator's frequency is, that is the frequency of the wave. Or 2 pi into that becomes the angular frequency of the wave. And k is omega by v, where p is the propagation speed of the wave okay, is along the medium, which in this case is the string. So the important thing here is that V is a mechanical property of the medium. which in this case is the string. Okay, it does not depend on the source. Of the wave, it depends on the medium. So in the case of the string, it actually depends on the tension and the linear mass density. So later we will see that there's a formula by which we can relate the propagation speed V with these two things, the tension in the string and the linear mass density. So it depends on these two physical properties or you can say mechanical properties of the string and it's independent of the source. Whether the source is oscillating at you know, five hertz or 15 hertz or 100 hertz, whether the source's amplitude is one millimeter or half a millimeter, it doesn't matter. The speed with which the wave will propagate only and only depends on these two things, the tension in the string and the linear mass density. Unless we tighten the string or loosen the string to change its tension, or we replace the string with one having a heavier gauge or a lighter gauge, we're not going to be able to change the speed at which the wave is propagated. Because that is determined by the physical properties of the medium. It's in fact, on its own, it's a physical property of the medium. Okay, so these are some very important points over here. We'll come to phi also. Phi is just a general phase term. Okay. Because your source need not be omega t only. Right? It can be omega t plus any phi. 
Okay, so that's why.
Okay, now in that equation, the final term phi, this is a phase constant. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's a phase constant such that the displacement at the position x equal to zero at t equal to zero is given by a sine phi. Okay, now the general equation which we have written like this, we will see that there are two ways of interpreting this. So after all, it is a function of x and t. So one way of interpreting it is called interpretation of the general equation. One way of interpreting it is that we can write it as uh, we can keep the value of t equal to some t naught that is constant. So basically what we're doing is freeze time in the equation. So then what happens is that the equation becomes a function of x. So this represents, but this y is a function of x at the particular instant t equal to t naught. So this equation now represents a snapshot. When we freeze time, what we get from the equation is like a short picture of the medium at a instant of time. T equal to T1. The other equation is that we could fix the value of x. So let's take x equal to x naught. So then what we get from it is that on fixing the value of x, just like on freezing time, we get y is a at x equal to x1. So these are two different ways in which we can interpret the equation and we will understand this visually also. So what happens when we interpret the equation in the first way? We get y as a function of x. So when we plot it, it shows us the shape of the medium. That is in this case, the exact shape the string will have at that particular instant of time. And when we do that, we'll see that for this above equation, the shape of the string is that of a sine wave or a sine curve. That is why it is called a sinusoidal wave or a harmonic wave. Because the shape that the string is in or the shape that the string takes at any particular moment of time, if you take a snapshot picture of the string, it will look exactly like a sine wave. And as time progresses, if we compare the snapshots, we will see that it's like that wave shape is actually shifting. It's traveling along the wave, uh, along the string. So that's why it's called a traveling wave or a propagating wave. And along with the shape traveling, we'll see that actually mechanical energy also travels at a particular rate. 